Compute capsules are a shareable, traceable, reproducible encapsulation of the code, data, and environment used in computational research. They are version controlled and linked to the results they produce. Capsules are the main building block of CodeOcean. So in this video, we're going to walk through a capsule by setting one up from scratch. We will install packages and build the computing environment. We'll attach data to our capsule, select our compute resources, develop code inside a cloud workstation. And finally, we'll share the capsule with others and show you how we can export it out of the system entirely. Okay, so let's start by creating our capsule from scratch. I will actually do this by cloning from a private GitHub repository. So we're going to paste in the URL here. So I'm going to have to grab that, copy this URL. Inside of this Git repo, we have just a simple readme file, an environment.yaml file, and a Jupyter notebook. So let's go ahead, paste that in, and we're going to get our new capsule. All right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is to select our starter environment. So here we have a list of starter environments. This is managed by the admin of the system. So I'm going to start with this, uh, this one with Python and R with JupyterLab and RStudio pre-installed. So let's go ahead and select that. Now, as soon as I selected my starter environment, you can see the package managers here, which are determined by the languages detected in the starter environment selected. We'll also see that a Docker file was automatically generated for me as soon as I selected my starter environment. Now, the next thing I'll want to do is to add packages to my Docker file. So I'm actually going to do that from this environment.yaml file. We're going to click this actions menu and a nice little shortcut. We're going to click install packages. We're going to click save. And just like that, all of my packages are seen here in the environment UI. They are also here in my Docker file. Uh, that was a nice little shortcut that's built into the system. But let's say, for example, I wanted to use this UI here. Um, just as a quick example, we will install IOC manager, click the checkbox, take a look at the Docker file. And there is the package that we just added. So again, there's no need for users to know how to write their own Docker file. They can use the UI we have here as well as some built-in shortcuts. If we wanted to get rid of this, it's gone. We can see it's gone from our Docker file. All right. So there's the environment that we want. Now we need to take a look at this Jupyter notebook. I'm actually going to drag this into the code folder here. So this is um, the file that we want to run. Now we want to, of course, select the uh, compute resource that we're going to run this cloud workstation on. So I'm going to hop back over to the environment UI. This is the default resource for my compute capsule. Now, if I wanted to change it to something a little greater, very easy to use this UI to select exactly what I want. We even have a full list of dedicated machines. So this is everything that's available to us from AWS in the region we have CodeOcean deployed, starting from super small resources all the way up to um, with multiple terabytes of RAM. If you happen to select a starter environment with GPU resources, you would see those in this list as well. Uh, this is a very simple computation. I'm just going to go with a simple one core, eight gigabyte of RAM. Click apply. And now let's go ahead and launch our cloud workstation. Since this is a Jupyter notebook, I'm going to go ahead and launch Jupyter Lab here. All right. And here we go. This is the exact same native Jupyter Lab experience that you might be used to seeing outside of CodeOcean. Got here. Take a look at the code folder. This is my uh, Jupyter notebook. We can also, from inside of this cloud workstation, we can select data that we want to attach to our capsule. So uh, our PBMC data set, I'm going to click the plus sign and we will hop back to the data folder and see this data set that I had just attached. Now we can also do this exact same thing from within the capsule IDE view that I just showed earlier. So no matter where you are in CodeOcean, you're, you're never far from your data. If I wanted to run this um, inside of Jupyter Lab, we can you know, run a few cells inside of this environment. There are other ways we can run a CodeOcean capsule. So let me demonstrate that now. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes here and shut down my workstation. I'm going to show you the other way that we can launch um, a run from inside of a capsule. So we have our file. This is our Jupyter Notebook. We can set this as the file to run. Now that automatically generated a run script for me. So you can see here, it's going to do exactly what you see in this file here. This file is automatically generated based on the file type that is detected when you set a file to run. 
So now that we've done that, again, I'm just going to quickly show the Manage Data panel. This is the exact same UI that I showed inside of a Cloud Workstation. So we can very easily manage the data that is attached to our capsule. Let's go ahead and click a reproducible run. So this is going to use the exact same machine that we were using before. And again, on the right-hand side, you're seeing all of the automation that is being performed for the user with the click of a single button. All right, so our run has just completed and we can see the run result in our capsule timeline here. Here is the HTML file. We can see some figures from the analysis. We can also show the UMAP that was generated for us. All right, so now that we have a successful run, we know that the environment is good, the code run, data is good. Let's go ahead and commit our changes that we made to our capsule. So you can write a custom uh, git commit message here, or you can just go with what is default. And I'm going to click commit. And now we can also sync our changes back to our original GitHub repository. So we'll go ahead and click sync with GitHub. And then let's hop back to our original GitHub link here. And we can see the new commit that we just made. So all of the changes that we do in the capsule can be synced back to the original GitHub repository. We can also check for updates from within the capsule itself and then pull any new changes back into our Code Ocean capsule. All right, so now that we know our capsule is running, let's, let's cover what it looks like to share a capsule with other users. So let's go to the share button in the top corner here. So right now this is a private capsule, so I am the only person who has access to it, but let's go ahead and add one of my colleagues. We'll add Jake to this. Now I can specify exactly what other users can do with my capsule. So I can add Jake as a viewer so that he can make any changes. I can make him an editor or I can make him a fellow owner of this capsule. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Jake to this. Now he's gonna to come to this capsule and see the exact same thing that I do. He's not gonna to need to rebuild the environment. He can make any changes, he can click run not going to have to basically do any work at all in order to get this capsule running. Now that we've shared a capsule, I'm gonna quickly go over what it looks like to release a capsule. Uh, we have the release button in the top right-hand corner of our screen here. Let's click release. Now there's a checkbox, a, a list of checkboxes, um, basically steps that you need to ensure um, have been followed before the system will allow you to release a capsule or pipeline. Um, the purpose of releasing a capsule like this is to ensure that some analysis that you've created is going to be reproducible essentially forever. So let's go ahead and release this. Once we have released our capsule, it's actually going to create a new version of this capsule. So let's go over to the release version. Here we can see that this is release version 1.0. Now this is actually a read-only immutable copy of this capsule. That is how we ensure that it is going to be reproducible forever. I'm going to show what else you can do with this capsule. So let's say for some reason I want to treat this capsule as some sort of standard analysis, maybe treat it as a template analysis. If I was a different user, it would be very simple for me to come here to the capsule dropdown and actually click duplicate from this release capsule. And it's going to make for me a brand new private capsule that only I have access to and I can do whatever I want with this new copy. So what's great about duplicating from a release, I know that my environment is set up, ready to go. I don't need to rebuild anything from scratch. My code here, I know this code works. I can simply swap out this data, attach new data, make any changes, uh, developing more code in, in, a, in a cloud workstation. Basically, I now have a new analysis that I can build upon, and I didn't have to build anything from scratch. Now, one last thing that I want to mention before we wrap up is Code Ocean's no lock in philosophy. So, anything that you build in Code Ocean, you can very easily export to run it outside of the system. So, we'll go to the capsule dropdown. We're going to click export. And now it's going to export all of my files with the exception of attached data. It's now a zip file. I can open it, run it on my laptop, on external hardware, on a cluster and everything is just going to run so long as you have Docker installed. And that's Code Ocean's no lock-in philosophy. So there are many more things that we can do with capsules, such as connecting them together in our pipeline builder, 
adding them to collections to share with a wider organization. If you have any questions about how capsules work, make sure to take a look at our documentation or book a demo with us to go into more detail.